Yo, yo, doing a short live stream about uh, spring uh, programs, pretty much. I just finished up writing a script for a video, and uh, usually I go live at 8. I'm going to be going back, but I'm kind of tired, and uh, I have some stuff I want to do. So, I'm going live early, and it's going to be short, because I'm going to make a video about this. But, this gives anyone the opportunity to personally ask me a question. So that's what I want to do, but I will be doing a full video on this as well. So when you come in, please say what's up in the chat. That way I can uh, know who's in here and say what's up back. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a live stream, so <clears throat> let me know on audio and stuff if everything is sounding, looking, um, clear, right, whatever. Let me know. But just want to answer anyone's lawn-related questions about your spring program. Because we're coming off of a very wet summer into a very cold winter. And now we're here. We are going to be in springtime. So we're going to need, um, you know, you're going to need to get your ducks in a row to have a nice lawn this year um, after some... Um, some rough years so it could be another one this year as well but i want to make sure i'm here to help you about your lawn so again if the audio is not well or the video or something doesn't look right please comment and let me know um because i wanted to get it because <clears throat> i want it to be all right So let me know. Dan, if you just jumped in, please say what's up in the chat. I want to get a couple people more in here. And um, I said I, I really just want to answer questions for anybody about their spring program. I can go over anything. I I wrote up a, my script for my uh, spring program. But it's, a good, it's a good one. I don't mind my handwriting. It's horrendous, but it's a good three pages. Uh, it'll be a, a shorter video, but I think it'll be really effective and give everyone the information they need. Um, but again... I want to ask it. I have my script here, so I have all the information I I believe I need for it. Um, about your spring program, I have it right in front of me, so I figured if anyone's going to ask and I'm going to answer, now shall be the time. So please, please comment and say what's up. Unless you are and I'm not seeing them, I don't see anybody in the chat. Okay. That seems to be that seems to be the case. When is too late for a pre-emergent? Um, so there's never technically too late. There's just less effective times, but but you're gonna miss a lot of. If you go too late, you're gonna miss a lot of the hard to kill summer weeds like crabgrass and things. So. Um, I've always known this and things. I've always do research every year to see if I can get new information. But um, it, now everything I've seen, and, and this makes sense, this is a lot of what I've learned. It's the soil temperatures when right before the soil temperatures hit 50 to 55 is when you want to apply uh, that spring uh, pre-emergent because that's when those weeds start to germinate. Remember, again, it's right before 50 to 55. It's really weird in zone 9, North Florida area. Because um, it says like like the window is January to March is your window for pre's and pre's get a good sixty to ninety. I'm saying sixty to ninety. Ninety is very generous. A good sixty day control. So if you know if you're applying in that January, March could come and the pre-emergent already be gone. I like uh, I before fifty to fifty five, but a good. Uh, March, April is a good time to think about. Um, but you can go to Greencast uh, soil temperature map and it'll show you soil temperatures there. So the best is always right before the soil temperatures hit 50 to 55. My recommendation uh, for North Florida, especially if you're, a, if you're a homeowner doing it yourself, February. February is a beautiful time. It could be a little early, but you won't be late. First question I have, sun... St. Saint Augustine, sorry, typo. St. Augustine grass, I have been fertil, uh, fertilizer for six months, so I can't fertilize now. Yeah, so you screwed, uh, you just made a mistake. Um, 
you really shouldn't be fertilizing in the winter time. I mean, if you're in South Florida, if you're zone, if you're zone ten and you're in South Florida, I mean, you're you're, you're probably gonna be okay. It's a little cold, but so if you're in South Florida, not a big deal. But that's why it's very important. Uh, Mario, all winter long, just to apply potassium and micronutrients and humic acids and things. You don't want to be feeding the lawn um, because you're giving it the wrong energy at the wrong time. And kind of when the spring comes, um, it's gonna your lawn's going to be slow getting up. And like you said, now you can't fertilize because you just did. So, so that'll be... Um, so that'll, you know, that's going to kind of put you behind in the program and your lawn may stress and struggle. Oh, oh overall, you're going to be okay. Um, but the timing is very important in the spring. Just potassium, humic, till February, March-ish. Uh, then do your spring application. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> what about California? Um, what about it? Uh, I'm, I'm, I guess you're assuming so... Uh, if you have St. Augustine grass in California, I'm sorry because it needs uh, it needs the least amount of water, but uh, it, uh, the climate's calmer there. But it's just I know you have a lot of watering restrictions there, so it may be hard to have a nice turf. Uh, let me see myself what zone California is in. Actually, uh, here's to go. I'm making some chocolate. Hope you don't mind. Uh oh, no caps. Uh, uh. All right, there we go. The old California way. Okay, so it looks like all of California, at least along the coast areas, is, is zone nine. So you're going to follow a similar program, but it may, it, it, it's going to be a little bit different because you really don't get too cold and your climate doesn't fluctuate like ours. So, which will make it easier. So I think you have a, a longer time frame. but what I would do is I would go to the Greencast soil temperature app and see what your soil temperatures are around in California. So, uh, soil temperatures around, you know, I would check that. If it doesn't even get into the 50s in California, then it's just going to be about timing. I would do February, um, you know, if, but if the soil temperatures do get that low, you know, wait for them. But if they never do, I would just do January. Fe February, I think, is a really good time frame in California. If someone else is from California, um, I'm speaking off of knowledge, not from experience on that. A lot of times when I talk about San and grass, I speak from experience. So, that is from a knowledge standpoint. But your zone map is, you know, showing similar with where I'm at here in nine. So it'll be okay. Hey, Chad, long time. Thanks, Nate. I really appreciate you coming in. All, all, all is okay. Had some family issues, some personal issues, and um, just been busy. But I really want to get back on the wagon. So thank you, and I appreciate your support. Hi, how are you doing? I have a question about pre-emergent. I'm in Florida. My cell temperature is 73. Applying pre-emergent will work or not? It will. Um, it just won't be as effective, but still apply it. It's really important to get that spring pre-emergent down. Let's do... Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you never really... You know, um, here we go. I'm here um, in North Florida, Jacksonville, San Augustine, to be more exact. And um, so you're you're probably down. You're gonna be past Orlando, I'm assuming. So if you want to check out all, uh, uh, what are we looking at? Here is twenty. I like a five year, a ten year average is a good line. But I would go off of maybe like a five year average. So uh, here we are. So showing is. I, we probably should have done uh, closer to January, the pre's. But again, like I said, that's that's so difficult to do because it's wearing out by March. And um, some of those weeds still haven't germinated yet. So either you, you do uh, January, March application. Um, 
or uh, you just wait. So if you're, you're 73 and it's down there, you're a little bit late, but I would go ahead and, and apply it sooner than later because you're, you're going to get some control and it's going to help stop crabgrass and things like that. Um, and it's going to stop crabgrass and things like that. So um, I would just go ahead and apply it. But what are your thoughts on top dressing? Um, oh, I love top dressing. Top dressing is one of the best things you can do for your lawn. But now, if you're going to top dress, what you want to do is aerate first. Super, super important. So because what you're doing is when you think about it is so aerate is pulling pulling plugs out of the uh pulling dirt plugs out of the soil and it leaves a, a void there so if you aerate and then top dress you're not just putting that soil on top it's actually dropping down into the root zone so you're starting to actually change the composition of your soil from uh, usually here in Florida, sandy and crappy. So that is the best thing you can do for your lawn. I love top dressing. The only thing is it's labor intensive and expensive, which is just why it's hard to do. Uh, we offer it as a service. I try to push on every customer, but the price is just high because of the amount of work and the cost of the product. So um, I really feel bad for my customers, but I promote everyone. If you can't afford us to do it, please at least do it on your own and you can slowly work on it. But the best thing you can do, air rate first, you get more bang for your buck. Um, I actually want to add some, um, I'm glad someone asked the question about the soil temperature. I actually am going to add something to my notes for my, my video. I'm going to make a full video about, about this. It just won't be as in detail as we're going to talk about because I try to make my videos, um, just broad and kind of user friendly and not too, too detailed, um, because it can get overwhelming. But if you're in an area where your soil temperatures are staying consistently warm and they're not really dropping, um, I would do then like a January, March, um, January pre and a March pre. And then you do like January pre, do half the application rate. So um, I would do like half the application rate in January and then a full rate in March. Um, if your soil temperature never drop that low, that can, that can help you get control. So um, I'm going to really add that to my notes. Um, again, that's really our zone 10 people are kind of here. It's tough as us as a company because of how many customers we have and we want to get all this stuff down, down timely, but we're treating different people at different times. So it is what it is. So for us professionals, we have to be more broad with it, but as a homeowner, you can be a little more um, detailed and really get the timing down better. Um, so as you can see, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I know the writing's kind of in the way, I guess. Um, but I mean, January 24th, the source soil temperatures in, uh, in St. Augustine were 55. I mean, so that's pre, that's pre-emergent temperatures, but those, you know, it's not, it wasn't really ready yet. So it's kind of weird. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of this weird game you have to play. Um, but I would, I'm liking the half rate January, full rate March um, for us weird, at least people in kind of this weird area. So uh, it's going to go silent for a minute because I'm going to write this down in my notes for my videos. I don't want to forget. So thank you for you brought up that point. And feel free to uh, ask any question. I'm sorry, I'm writing something down, but think of a question. Feel free to ask it. We'll, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll do whatever. You know, we'll have fun here. Go over questions. I'll look up fertilizers for you. We'll do whatever. Ask away. No problem. We'll have fun here.
Sorry about that. I just had to add to my notes. But uh, I have some people here, so I'll do a quick run view of what the video... Oh, sorry, you have a question? Come in here. Oh, Nate. Nate, Nate, Nate. Have you ever used Pitman Magnum for pre-emergent control of Kalinga? Um, I don't believe I have. Um, that's, that's interesting. I'm assuming if it's a pre-made for Kalinga, because Kalinga in most sedges, I think all sedges, I'm pretty confident all sedges are water weeds. Um, I might be wrong on all, but I know majority of sedges are water weeds. So that means they lie in wet areas. Uh, pre-emergent don't work well in wet areas. So if you have a pre-emergent that's made for Kalinga sedge, it's probably a pre-emergent that can work better in wetter areas, um, but it may have other side effects and things like that. So like for me, again, we're a big company. We go out with the best broad pre-emergent um, and our main control Kalinga sucks, and, and we do hate it, but Kalinga is treatable. So that is a big... If there's a benefit to Kalinga, that's it. That we It can be treated with a Sedge control. And they have, like, Sedge, Sedge Hammer Plus? Oh, Nate, I have a product for you. I think we might have talked about it already, though. Uh, it's, I've been, I'm been i a little rusty on here, so I don't remember if we talked about it, but I have a really new good Sedge product that's amazing. Um, but our main control when we're applying a pre-emerging, especially professional is we want to get rid of crabgrass, uh, uh, doveweed, buttonweed. Well, sorry, not doveweed, not this time of year. We do want to stop that stuff, but buttonweed, things like that, because those are very invasive and hard to kill weeds. And some crabgrass aren't treatable, um, especially in the summer months. So preventing those is our most important thing that we like to focus on. Um, but I haven't heard of it. Uh, I will uh, check it out out uh let's check it out right now so yeah like if you're a homeowner that actively has constant kalinga sedge issues this might be something good for you um i just don't know um oh this is a uh, interesting okay so this is a product Give me uh, oh, that's why I'm on shopping. I need to do all, and we need to go to oh, current and previous label. The label here, one gallon. All right, the active is S. Uh, Melotha, sure. I'm not very familiar. Very heavy active, though. Pre-emergent. Oxalis also. Oh, good call. I didn't think about Oxalis. Well, I, I should. I'm seeing it all the time, but I didn't think to say it. Good call. Let's see what we got here. That's not a very cluttered label. Very easy to read. Application. Spray equipment. So, uh, we want to go try bulk granular. Amounts of pen and magma and other herbicides needed by the following formula. Oh, this is interesting. It's doing it off of, uh, like fertilizer rates and things. Hmm. Crop use. Turf grass. Here we go. Warm season grass. Bermuda centipede St. Augustine Bahia Zoysia. Including commercial St. Augustine grass saw production. Uh, do not use the amount on turf grass in New York State. Nothing. Um, okay, so apply pin and magnum before weeds emerge. Since soil moisture is necessary to activate, which most pre's it is, uh, irrigate within half an inch of watering if rainfall does not occur within seven days. That's very common of, of, of most pre's, so that's nothing crazy. Wow, whoa. Split 
one pint. This is a very, uh, well, let's see the weeds it controls. Sorry, I'm reading this for the first time. Oh, wow, this is, this is nice. Uh, these crab grasses, smooth and large crab grass. Um, that's good. Unfortunately, tropical is the killer. Nothing does, nothing treats, nothing prevents. Tropical crab grass, just a monster. Um, annual sedge, yellow nut sedge, that's great. Uh, bearded strangle top, Mexican strangle up, dove weed, annual bluegrass. It's funny that there's no Kalinga. The weird they don't have the other sedges on here. Um, it's very strange. Um, but very low rates. See restrictions. Seems like a very restrictive product, though. Yeah, if you're having this these active issues, uh, then I think this would be a good a good pre. Um, but I think the list is very limited. Uh, I think for a season a, a season long guy, Nate. I mean, this is right up your alley. You know what you're controlling. Um, you're using this at a very low rate. Um, and, and you're controlling certain problematic weeds that you cannot seem to get full control of. Um, but I think sticking with your prodiamine and things like that for the normal homeowner is a really good start because that's a very basic pre that will get control of the basic uh, weeds in the lawn. I think this is a little more of a higher level pre-emergent because it's targeting more uh, certain things and, and the rates are very, very low uh, and the product expensive. So uh, applying and treating and doing this with the liquid would be a little more um, difficult. But I like this. I'm going to look into this a little uh, more, Nate. I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't very familiar uh, with this. Um, I'll, I'll just I'll have a thing out here. So uh, what I'll go over real quick, anyone has any questions, just feel free to jump in. But I just want to kind of talk about what I had planned for my next video uh, of your, your pretty much your uh, spring program. So we'll go over it real quick. I'm pretty hungry and I'm kind of tired, which is why I started the video early. Um, but we'll go over it. So this is uh, your spring program. So. I'm doing most of this for zone nine growing seeds area, which is us. So uh, I put, you know, zone nine is usually from uh, March to April through September, October, and November. That's our usual growing season. Um, so that's around, uh, like I said, in zone nine, um, I used it last year for a bit for sedge control. Just wanted to run it by you. It is money. Yeah. Um, I mean, how, how did you feel for bang for the buck though, Nate? That's really what it comes down to. As a homeowner, you have no margin. So if you if you liked it and, and it seemed to work for you, you have a good looking lawn, sure. But for us in the industry, uh, it's a little wild. Let me, uh, let me show you guys what we use um, that will kind of uh, give a good idea of of the pre-emergent we use. So this, this is the pre-emergent uh, we're using. This is a good fall pre-emergent we're using at this spring, um, but we're using a split app rate, uh, application rate. So um, here it is, it's, it's called Spectacle Flow. Uh, I don't recommend this to a homeowner. Um, they have good bed control, uh, but I don't recommend this to a homeowner um, because as you can see, it's $1,700 for one gallon of Spectacle, which is by the way, uh, oh, it's agency price. I was gonna say it's a good price for homeowners, but they're not allowed to change the price. That's, that's the price for everybody. Uh, it's just a killer, but you use such a, such a small amount. Um, but you can see these products can get very pricey, but this is what we're applying in our customer's lawn. So, uh, I got a, uh, got a box of gold sitting around. Hey Chad, hope you're doing well. Glad to see. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support. Every, I'm doing a lot better. Um, had some time. So, uh, thank you. I didn't buy it. Oh, well, that's always a win, Nate. Uh, someone I know let me have some of the to try it. So it was nothing. I purchased it because it was 250 for the gallon. And you're using a pint, 
right? Is that... So that's a high rate, then. So if you're doing that... South Jersey, what's up, man? Thanks for uh, thanks for coming in and checking out the chat. Uh, I hope it's staying warm over there. We're loving it here in Florida. I hope the same uh, the same for Jersey. And thanks for tuning in. Um, but I'm gonna go back to like uh, the fertilizer. So what I recommend for a good fertilizer is a uh, 24 to 11, which seems to be hard to find in the homeowner market. Um, so I uh, what I found to be best and very common is a 1648 uh, uh, for a spring fer uh, fertilization. So, um, uh, which because you always want your nitrogen, which your first number, to be double your potassium in the spring. So that's the most important. So you have that there and you always want a little bit of phosphorus. So I would do the 1648 at the high rate on the bag, um, depending where you're at in uh, March, uh, March or April. So if you're here in North Florida, now's a good time we're, we're we're hitting solid weather so uh let's see it nate group buy is common for uh for pitman on lawn forms oh i like that who are you thanks for that information um i really appreciate that uh that's really cool um that they have uh guys i would check that out but they have some group buy um, Seamus Light, because like I said, these products are very expensive and you use very small amounts. So, you know, like I said, the, you would never probably use, a homeowner would never use a gallon of spectacle in a freaking lifetime. So if you wanted to get the better products and not be eaten up by the price, I guess you can do a, a, a group buy and then I'll split the product, which is totally legal, totally fine. Just make sure you know what you're doing. Um, but I think that's a freaking great idea to buy better products for your lawn. Uh, thank you so much for, for chiming in with that comment. That is great. So again, the 16.48 is great. I always like 50% slow release. Um, that's very important. It could be maybe a little less if it's the springtime, but 50% most fertilizers are that, and that's a solid to stay around. Um, I don't recommend doing anything over 24 nitrogen. A lot of these Scott's products are like 30 to 32%, which is insane here. You just don't need that much nitrogen, guys. You really, really don't. It is absurd to apply that much nitrogen at one time. If you want 32% uh, percent nitrogen, just do 16.48 and then come back two months later and do it again. You're, that's, you're going to be way more effective. Um, don't buy weed and feeds. I am not a big weed and feed fan. Uh, gr granular herbicides don't work well. Does fine on the feeding, but not great on the weeding. And again, they're high nitrogen products, so don't do weed and feed. Feed and then weed, okay? That's the best way to really get uh, good control. Uh, liquid post-emergence are the best. Li uh, uh, granular pre or granular post-emergent herbicides, which actually treat the weeds, are just not effective. Um, so that's a waste. Um, I'm not trying to go into details of the video because I'm going to film this video this week and post it. So I kind of want to go too much into it. Um, but, oh, here's a good, I get a lot of, you know, how, how much to use. So you can go on um, Google Maps, find your home. There's a measuring tool. Find the measuring tool. It starts in meters. Turn it to square feet. Measure your yard, you know, and, and it has like this little pin thing where you can go around your house. So you can get a very accurate me measurement, probably within a thousand square feet or less of your lawn. Find the bag. If your lawn is 5,000 square feet and the bag covers 10,000 square feet, you know you need to use half of that bag. So that's how you figure out the rates uh, of, of how much to use. And like I said, you don't have to go out and manually measure your yard. The internet's a beautiful thing. You can find your soil temperatures online. You can measure your lawn online. You can do all this homework online. You actually have to go outside and do the applications. You can't do that online. If we could, I'd be doing applications from my home and I'd be on the beach in the Bahamas doing these streams. Um, so, and then again, and uh, my main thing is do not over fertilize the lawn. No need to put out heavy amounts of nitrogen. Uh, guys, just just go, go. If you're not sure, go lighter. Give it a month. If the lawn did not get the results that you wanted, do another light rate. You can't pick it back up once it's down, but you can always put down more. There's this super panic in the springtime. Just apply it. Do, um, do the 16.48, wait a month, results aren't there, apply again. I'm sitting on a bag of anertisin 16.48, and unfortunately my 
Um, Phosphor's off the chart, and I fell victim to the Milo craze. Oh, using just ju are, are, are you talking about just using Mil Milorganite? I'm gonna try 15015. 15. Um 15015 is it's fine. Um there, there's nothing wrong. You're, you're not doing the wrong thing. Um, but what that's gonna do is, is you're not gonna get as much top now because what you're doing is you, you're splitting the energy in opposite directions. Half the growth is gonna go up, half the growth is gonna go down. Ideally, why 15015 is not it's not the wrong thing, but it's not as efficient, is because you should have been applying potassium all winter long. So that potassium should be in the soil. Now it's time to tell your lawn, hey, I'm giving you nitrogen, wake up, grow. And and so that's why I like doing you do double the nitrogen as the potassium in the springtime, but you're not going the wrong way. If you do not apply potassium all winter long, then this is not the wrong thing to do. Like I said, if you just don't see a pop, don't feel like something wrong happened. The, the plant's energy is just being split, so you're gonna get that slower result of the nitrogen, but you're still feeding the roots. So long term, that's gonna help you out. So when you're using something like that, just don't be upset if you don't get the results that, that you're looking for uh, because you're splitting that nitrogen potassium evenly. So, you, you're, again, you're not doing anything wrong. Um, everyone's lawns are different. Everyone's soils are different. If you get a good result with 15-0-15, hey, you just gave the lawn more potassium. Win, win. Um, yeah, so uh, if you're talking about the mill, mill organite craze, which is... Um, what I think the uh, the Milo craze that you're talking about is, I mean, Organite is fine, but that is a summer spoon feeder, okay? That is, this is your big spring push, guys. This is the big nitrogen. Wake up the lawn, get the lawn growing. Tell the lawn it's time to grow. I want my yard back, I want to start mowing. Most people don't want to start mowing, but that's, that's a different case. Some people enjoy it. Most of you guys here probably enjoy it. So, you know, or you may not mow it yourself, but Wake the lawn up and then spoon feed it with milorganite. Milorganite is not your main source uh, of food because it's just, it's got some natural nitrogen and a high iron, but that won't give the lawn what it needs. The lawn needs this heavy wake up and then every month in the summer, just give it milorganite to extend it out. Yes, I was throwing it down in all the holidays heavy for two years. This was before soil tests became popular in the lawn community. Been using phosphory and take a, a ling tune to come down. Takes a long time to come down. So yeah, so I mean, if you did a soil sample and your phosphorus is off the uh, off the charts and you do not need it, um, don't add it. There is a uh, actually you have a lot more choice when you don't add the foss. The foss is mainly for a lot of us in Florida. Um, oh, I just got rid of that. It's for a lot of us in Florida because and also those all three macros together complement each other. So they tend to tend to release better. But if you're high phosphorus in the soil, you don't have to worry about that. So yeah. So then I would just do a. Um, I said there's so many without the foss. Here you go. Twenty four zero eleven. Again, you're on the higher side nitrogen. Twenty four is just pushing it over the edge, I believe, of how much. So make sure to be uh, at a conservative rate with this. Um, you know, if, if you just jump something with a lower amount of N. Um, oh, here we go. Here's the 15015. Fine stuff. Not a problem with it. Ooh, 26 to 11. Uh, too, too big on the 26. 24. Yeah, so there's plenty of things without the FOSS. So if that's the case, just take out the FOSS. You know what you need for your lawn. That's okay. Oh, don't worry about spelling. Um, I just can't. I would, I would love to use my phone as an excuse, um, but I just can't spell. So don't worry about that. Trust me, if you... If you read all these notes I just wrote for my script, you would you would probably never take any of my advice again because you think a child wrote it. I went back through communication I had with the person I got the pen and magnum from. Yeah, it's max per thousand year is 20. Okay, so it's max 28 milliliters. I don't deal in... Um, Milliliters. 
Come on. Here we go. Whoa, what? That's so much. There's 20. Wait, 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 wait. I went back. No, 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 no. If it's only 28 milliliters. Sorry, I deal in all ounces. So, um. Oh, that's. No, that is heavy. Okay, you're like an ounce per thousand of that product? That is crazy. Spectacle, we're doing three ounces to an acre, which is 54,864,000 square feet. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm close to that. Don't quote me. I used to remember it. So, wow. And it's a liquid. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, we, we do everything in, in liquid ounces is, is, is how we do our breaks because we're spraying it at high, I guess. Maybe for a homeowner, ounces wouldn't make sense because you're doing that lower rates. But yeah, so that would be one ounce per thousand square feet of a product. That's insane. Um, that's a very high rate and at that price. Um, if, it, if it works, though, it, it might work. If it works, it works. But I, I'm just not familiar uh, with it. And with those rates, um, those concern me how high you have to apply. Uh, or I guess you don't have to, but can be. Does Tio perform soil tests for their customers um, and then plan how to treat or have a blanket method? Thanks. So what we do is we always recommend um, we always recommend our customers do soil tests. Now, we don't do them because they cost money. And um, we tell people, you know, if you want to do a soil test or, or pay us extra to do a soil test, we'd love to do it and we're more than happy to. Most people, unfortunately, do not do that. Um, it, it is very unfortunate. So... We do go out with a general broad program. Um, I monitor soil temperatures on here. I know the, the the type of soil we have in the area. So I do mix for that. The great thing about like our program with our humic acid and stuff is we go out at a neutral pH. So if your pH is, is too low or too high, just a little bit, it doesn't matter to us because we're gonna help neutral we're gonna help it get to neutral no matter what. Now, if it's way off on either scale, then more things have to be applied. But you can really tell here if you're your pH is way off, the lawn's going to really show that. So we can tell that. So we do a blanket, but our customers who do do soil samples, what we do is we have a, we have a second tank on our truck. That's a custom tank. So my technician has a broad thing we do to most of our lawns, um, that we ideally want to do in our, like, like a blanket program, but then all of our customers who sent us soil samples or that we've been treating their lawn for years and we go, Hey, this lawn responds better to more of this than that. So this is what we need to do on this yard. We have a, a, a a software we keep all those notes in my technician's phone so when my technician pulls up to that customer he can see that this lawn responds better off of this and that with that second custom tank he makes a special mix for that lawn so all of our customers that send us soil samples we add it to a picture in the customer's account so my technician goes there the first thing that pulls up is a picture of their soil test and then he can look at everything on there and then he can determine what he needs to do from there so we recommend all of our customers to do that and usually when we get a complaint and someone not happy with the results that's our first thing did you do a soil sample no why did you do so uh, well i didn't want to spend the money i didn't think it was necessary hey well we, re we really recommend you do a soil sample because then we can we can customize the application for your lawn and see what we're missing um and then we can make up for that in your lawn when we apply and you might get better results that way so uh i i would love it to be more exactly what every lawn needs but unfortunately with a business model uh, it is just so difficult to do that and get the customers that work with you getting the soil samples and things like that and, sp and, and spending a little bit of extra money. But uh, that's a great, great question. Um, but if you have a fertilization company, I recommend just giving them uh, a soil, just doing it and then sending them a copy of your soil sample. If they don't care for your soil sample, get rid of that company immediately. If they say, oh, no, it doesn't matter. We have a program that we're gone. See ya. Get rid of them. If, if you're offering a soil sample and they deny it, they're not, they're not any, they're no good and are not there for the benefit of your lawn and your, uh, not, they're not in it for your best interest. I can promise you that. I hope that answered your question there. Um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Nate, that's just a weird product, man. I've never seen a pre at, at, at such a high rate. Yeah, please give us a call. I do free estimates. We do free estimates too. That's why I tell everyone. I say call us 
I come out myself. Person, well, I, I hope you're in our area, but I'll personally come out to your lawn. We don't do, I don't give any pricing or anything over the phone. I personally come out to your lawn and me and you walk the lawn together because there's every lawn we can't treat. Now, if, you, because if you're having extreme conditions with the lawn and, and I always get a history from your lawn and you're telling me a weird story um, and some things aren't adding up right or they don't seem right, I will ask for a soul simple. But I always go with you on the lawn and I make sure that we can get the results you're expecting. I don't sign you up. I say, hey, your lawn is too far gone. You need to do this, that, and that for the service. Or you can hire us to do this, that, and that, and then the service will work. But we don't just hire anybody and sign them up. We only hire people's lawns that we know we can improve, and that, that's obviously our, our, our job. Um, do you recommend to start introducing higher percent um, K levels in early spring so the grass is better prepared for the dreaded heat wave? Cool season once. Uh, oh, you're in Mirabella. I'm I, I I'm right down the street from you. Easy. We we service Mirabella, no problem. I live in World Golf myself, so that's where this video is happening in World Golf. So you're right in my area. So no problem. Please call us. Call our office. Lori will answer the phone. She's amazing. She will send me your information. I will call you, and we will set up a good time and date. Come meet on the lawn and give you a free estimate. So you're lucky. You get me in person for free ninety nine. Um, just because you happen to be in the area. So very, very cool. I'm excited to see you. Please give us a call. Do you recommend to start introducing higher levels of potassium in early spring? No. No, you don't. You want to be doing the opposite. You want to be waning off the potassium in the, in, in the, the springtime. That's what you should have been doing all winter. Now, Actually, what type of grass do you have? Let me ask you that. You're in Jersey. So um, if you don't have a warm season type of grass, um, you should not listen to me probably because you guys got to, I, I, I don't know what's going on. If you don't have centipede, Bermuda, Zoysia, St. Augustine, Bahia, that's it. Those any of those warm season grasses, I might not be giving you good information. Um, so super, please let me know what type of grass you have before I answer that question. But what I will say is, ideally, anyone in a warm season area, you would be doing the opposite all winter long. Is when you need to be applying that potassium, um, and then as the summer, as the spring comes, you wane off the potassium. Then you do. Half, half when you when you're doing your spring fertilization, double the amount of nitrogen as potassium to start waking it up and pushing growth in the proper direction. Rather than, because uh, just like um, the other gentleman said, I'm going to try the 15015. He's not wrong, but when you're upping the levels of potassium, the grass is spending its energy more in the roots rather than up top. So your up top results may not be as good um but your roots definitely will but in the growing season you need that top growing and staying healthy and being like you said being able to take the heat so if you've not been feeding potassium through the winter time then definitely do that asap and i would do like a 15 0 15 if you have not been applying potassium in the winter time that way you get that potassium down you guys potassium is super important potassium is not just root development it is what helps the plant photosynthesize. I mean, that's everything. So the plant can't use the energy from the nitrogen if it doesn't have the, um, the potassium to allow it to photosynthesize. So I'm getting a comment in here. Blue tag, blue bank, KBG. So I, I don't know what any of that is. That was... All gibberish to me. I'm so sorry. Blue tag, blue bank, KBG. I I have no idea what that is. That could be anything to me. I'm sorry. If, you, if that's the type of grass or... It's a little different when your area gets snow and you need to seed your yard. Things are differently. This is everything I'm I'm saying here. It is is going to be for warm season um, grasses uh, because that's where all my knowledge, all my information is. I understand how those grasses works with the soil temperatures and things. So, um, 
if it's the type of bluegrass or something like that that's seeded and stuff, I'm I am not 100 percent sure to to be honest with you. Um, I'm sure there's someone with some a cool season turf guy that can help you out. But yeah, let me know. And then um, can I get another? Um, okay, no, I didn't miss anything. Wait, I'm quiet. Okay, I thought I missed a question about something. No, 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 we seem to be good to go there. So I'm going to film the spring video sometime and post it up maybe this week, this weekend. I got kind of a crazy week. So I'm going to do that then, and uh, the full video will be up about, you know, spring fertilizer, pre-emergence, timing, and all that. Uh, super, I'm going to wait to see um, exactly what you meant by, oh, you know what, let's take to the internet. Oh, it's a type of turf. Right? Okay, 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 okay. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, so this is a, uh, an elite blend, a blue bank cage, I understand. I do have a small. Yeah, I, um, yeah, but the shorter season, I, I I don't know what to tell you to be honest. I and I apologize. Um, our, we're year round, so we can really prep the lawn in the winter time for the summer, which is a which is a big benefit. Um, so that's what we should be doing. But if your growing season is short, it seems like you kind of have to get that all in at one time. I would assume a more balanced program would work better for that situation. Um, because you haven't put those nutrients down. So maybe doing like a 15-0-15 um, would be great. Uh, maybe do that in two applications, then do Milorganite through the rest of the summer. Um, but you may want to check with the cool season turf guy before, um, because that's not me. Like I said, I, I didn't even know what you were saying. It, it, that could have been anything. That could have, that could have been a rare collectible. I don't know. But uh, gosh, the grass is gorgeous, though. Let's can we hold on? There we go. Look at this. Oh wait. No, no, there's people learning about stuff. But let me. Let's see. I mean, look at this, though. I am so jealous of this freaking grass. That is gorgeous. Look at and, and by the way, people don't even have to do that much work for it to look like that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe in Jersey, but gosh. That's a beautiful striped lawn right there. Let me tell you what. We don't get that here. It's very nice. Looks like Poana. Kentucky Blue, that's funny. Yeah, I would just check with a cool season guy. I'm sorry, I don't have more information for you. I do, I, I do apologize on that. Um, it's not 100 sure. Um, but we're. I, I was actually trying to do this for like 20 minutes. Um, but I think it's like, how long has it been? It's almost been an hour. I, I have so much fun here. I really do. I, I, so glad I'm back to doing this. I'm so glad people even tune in. I'm so glad people are being involved, asking questions. I love that I can answer questions. This is. Really fun. I really enjoy doing this. It's only supposed to be 20 minutes and here we are uh, an hour later. So these are great. Um, I'll hang out for another minute to see if anyone has any last minute questions. But I will have my spring video up soon. Um, and I will be back Wednesday, uh, usually at 8. Um, I, I just, I don't know, maybe 7.30. I just do 8 because I think it's a um, good time. Everyone's kind of done. Yes, I can get just like that. Not easy, though. Okay, I love real mowing. Yeah, I mean, St. Augustine on our best day doesn't even look like this. 
it's it, it, it's quite tragic. And I guess yeah, with a very short season. It's interesting. As as I expand out, I definitely want to learn more about these cool season grasses, but with seed and stuff, and like you said, your season being low, I don't know, and real mowing is gorgeous. I'm sure that Zoisha, I try to get, excuse me, guys. I try to get my customers here to uh, to hit their Zoisha with a real mower. I only have one guy that does it, but uh, in his lawn it is gorgeous but nobody else does it and that's what it needs that real mower makes a big difference on those fine grass blades let me tell you what that's it's insane green that is insanely green wow so see you later chad see ya thank you for tuning in i appreciate it again guys hang out here for a couple more seconds see uh if anyone else has any more questions my video will be up and i'll be live back again on wednesday and you can email me questions turforganics904 gmail.com email me pictures questions whatever and i'm more than happy to answer we appreciate your live stream thanks no thank you i appreciate you coming in tuning in and, and i have something to live stream um because I'm surprised I'm not just talking to myself most of the time, which I do all day. So thank you for tuning in and giving me someone to talk to and, and ask me questions. You guys keep this so entertaining. Like I said, I'm on here for an hour. I never feel like it. I'm, 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 it's a lot of fun. I enjoy this. So see if there's any more last minute questions. You know, and and uh, I appreciate you going to be giving us a call. Um, so I appreciate you giving us a chance for me to come out, meet you out there and give you an estimate. Hopefully, uh, you sign up and uh, meet the great people of Turf Organics. We have a great technician named Trayvon. He's the best. So, oh, it's those cool season folks like warm season grass. I would love to try Bermuda. So, no problem. We'll see. Um, it's funny. We and, and we like our we like your cool season. So it's the opposite. But so you say that. But here in Florida, we don't have Bermuda. Bermuda is very hard to maintain in most parts of Florida. Um, it takes very high. It, it can absolutely be done, but it's on a very high maintenance scale. Um, pretty much the only people I know that have nice Bermuda lawns, at least in the Jacksonville area and St. Augustine, are all owners of landscape businesses. <laughs> so that goes to show you our majority, St. Augustine and Zoisha and then Centipede in some parts. But St. Augustine, by far number one, Zoisha probably, Zoisha is newer. Zoisha number two, maybe mixed with Bahia and stuff. So, um, but yeah, just we just don't do too much Bermuda because the high maintenance here. Um, but I'm going to be doing Bermuda at my property. I'm regrading my backyard, so I'm going to destroy my beautiful Saint. Ong it's not beautiful. It's it's okay. I, I bought an abandoned property a year ago, so it was been abandoned for a year. Um, but for being abandoned, it's it's gorgeous, Saint Augustine. I'm losing it all because I have to regrade the property with dirt. So it's all being topped with dirt, and I'm going to see Bermuda because. I I am not sodding uh, St. Augustine because it's expensive. Um, and I don't want to do it. So, and I already had, it's kind of a mental thing. I already had St. Augustine and I buried it. So I, I feel bad. So I will be doing Bermuda and I'll be making probably some cool videos. So everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'll be back live. If you have any other questions, go check out, uh, email me, turforganics904 gmail.com. Check out any of my other videos and my spring video will be live hopefully this week up to this weekend. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in means the world to me. Seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everyone, have a great rest of your night. Enjoy the rest of your week. And to 